welcome to exam techniques in paper D4, personal taxation. My name is uh, Vincent Rukonde. Um, the Zambia Institute of Chartered Accountants has noted that the performance of most candidates for the various Zika accountants programs has generally been below average. The performance has been attributed to the inadequate preparation for the examinations, such as being on self-study with minimal guidance, uh, obtained from professionals in the area. And it has also been discerned from the marked scripts that uh, some candidates have been having difficulties in interpreting the command words in the question, uh, in the question requirements, and generally lacked time management skills to excel well at their examinations. Therefore, the following examination techniques presentation will cover the above issues in paper D4, personal taxation competences required by, by paper uh, D4, uh, personal taxation, common weaknesses in D4, personal taxation, which are made by the candidates in answering questions. And lastly, we are going to look at the examination answering uh, techniques. The paper D4 focuses on personal income taxation, including aspects of determination of tax residence for individuals, taxation of income from intellectual property, taxation of income from employment, and tax and financial planning for individuals. On completion of this paper, candidates are expected to reach a competence sufficient to be able to, number one, make personal income tax computations, number two, explain the criteria used in Zambia to determine the residence for individuals, number three, to distinguish between employment and self-employment and also carry out tax planning for individuals. There are learning objectives which are expected at the end of this paper, and we are going to go through these learning objectives so that candidates they are aware of what is even required of them when answering the questions in an exam. The learning objective number one, candidates are required to explain the meaning of the terms residence, ordinary residence, and domicile as they apply as they relate to individuals. Learning uh, objective number two, describe the principles of withholding taxes and calculate withholding taxes on all investment income. Calculate the income tax payable by uh, unincorporated businesses, such as sole traders, as well as uh, partnerships. Calculate the income tax payable on emoluments from employment and overseas income. Demonstrate the tax treatment of various payments made to employees and compute the taxable amounts including rules for share options. Calculate the income tax payable by the deceased estate and income tax on income of trusts. Advise the taxation implications of various financial arrangements that could be made by individuals. Advise on appropriate tax planning issues for individuals. What are the core areas of the syllabus of paper D4, personal taxation? The core areas of this paper include the following. Taxation of unincorporated businesses. The unincorporated businesses, we are talking about sole traders as well as partnerships. Number two, taxation of emoluments from employment. What are the taxes or how do employees pay taxes. We are also going to look at tax planning and financial planning for individuals, taxation of estates and trusts. Therefore, candidates sitting for paper D4 should ensure that they fully understand all the, all the key syllabus areas as we have discussed above. Let's look at the, some of the general weaknesses that are made in answering exam questions in the exam by candidates. The first weakness is that poor time management and poor presentation. In most cases, candidates fail to manage properly their, uh, their time and also fail to present the, the information as they are required by the question. Number two, failure to use correct tax rates in computing income tax when computing income tax liabilities. For example, a question will require candidates to compute the tax payable for a particular tax year by an individual, 
But in most cases, candidates end up using the company income tax rates. Uh, number three, focusing studies on only a few topics of the syllabus, which lead to lack of knowledge on the other areas of the syllabus. Failure to understand the requirements of the question. So in most cases, again, candidates, they do not read carefully the question to understand what the question is requiring for them to actually start answering that particular question. To differentiate allowable expenses from disallowable expenses. When a question is given in an exam, normally to start from the net profit and candidates will be required to identify those expenses which are allowable for tax purposes and those expenses which are disallowable for tax purposes. And those expenses which are disallowable are supposed to be added back to the net profit. So this is one of those failures or those weaknesses. The other weakness is that um, uh, candidates in most cases, they fail to compute the correct amount of capital allowances when computing the taxable business profits. In most cases, this is attributed to using wrong rates of wear and tear. For example, if a sole trader or a partnership has a business, they have a motor van. The rate of wear and tear allowance is actually calculated at the rate of 25%, but in most cases, candidates will actually use 20%. The other weakness is computing the wear and tear allowances on the income tax value instead of the original costs. Now, the principle, the principle is that capital allowances are calculated on cost and not on the income tax values. So if in the question you have been given the income tax values of the implements, plant and machinery and buildings, the, within the same question, the information about the original cost of those assets will be given. Therefore, candidates are supposed to calculate uh, the capital allowances on the original cost of those assets. Derek Charlwe is a sole trader uh, who has been in business for many years, trading as a retailer. His annual turnover has always exceeded 800,000 kwacha. The following is the statement of profit or loss for the end of the 1st December 2020. So we have started with the gross profit of 520,000 kwacha. Then we have added other income. So other income includes profit on disposal of office equipment of 12,000 kwacha. Rental income, which is gross, uh, there's a note of course there below. The rental income is 20,000 kwacha. Royalties, which are also gross, there's again a note there. Uh, the, the, the amount of royalties is 70,000 kwacha. Then we have bank interest. Also gross, uh, there's a note again, so the amount of the bank interest is 23,000 kwacha. We now move on to expenses. So the expenses which have been charged in the statement of profit or loss include salaries and wages, uh, Derek's nominal salary, uh, rent and rates, 50,000 kwacha, depreciation of land current assets, 32,000 kwacha, gifts and entertainment expenses, there's a note, 55,000 kwacha, Recoverable debts, there's a note again there, 22,000 kwacha. Legal and professional fees, 60,000 kwacha. Repairs and renewals, 20,000 kwacha. General expenses, 8,000 kwacha. So the total expenses coming to 496,000 kwacha, giving us a net profit for the year of 149,000 kwacha. Now, there's additional information which explains further the items which have been added in the statement of profit or loss and the expenses which have been deducted in the statement of profit or loss. We will quickly go through these notes. Note one. Note one is actually talking about the investment income which has been added to the gross profit, as you can see above. This note is saying the gross amounts of investment income are shown in the above statement of profit or loss. Withholding tax has been deducted at source where appropriate. The next note, note two, salaries and wages. Included in salaries and wages is 50,000 kwacha salary for Derek's nephew who assists in the day-to-day -day operations of the business as a bookkeeper. The other bookkeepers employed by Derek are paid a salary of 27,000 kwacha per annum each. Note three, rent and rates. Derek lives 
uh, in a rented house, it has been agreed with the Commissioner General that 40% of rent and rates relate to this living accommodation. Note 4, gifts and entertainment. Uh, this includes entertaining employees on a staff Christmas party, entertaining loyal customers, uh, gifts to customers of food hampers costing 50 kwacha each, gifts to customers of Derek Enterprises calendars, each costing 40 kwacha. Then we have recoverable dates. We have been given a recoverable uh, dates account. Of course, on the debit there, we are seeing uh, trade dates written off, loans to former employees written off, and then the closing balances in that account. On the credit side of the account, we have seen the open balances in, in that account. Then we have uh, the charge to profit or loss, and the trade dates which were previously written off, now recovered. Note number six, legal and professional fees. The legal and professional fees include legal fees in connection with overspeeding offense charged on Derek, legal fees in connection with purchase of land, accountant's fees, uh, accountant's fees, and income tax services. Uh, income tax appeal, uh, fines for breach of labor laws. Then note seven, we have repairs and renewals. This includes 15,000 kwacha incurred on the acquisition of new office equipment. The office equipment was acquired on the 1st October 2020 and was brought into use on 5th November 2020. The balance of the repairs relate to existing assets acquired five years ago. General expenses. General expenses include donation to approved public benefit organizations, donation to political parties, payment for late submission of previous year tax return, other revenue allowable expenses. We have other information which has been given by the question, and this other information includes, one, goods taken for personal use. During the tax year 2020, Derek took some goods with a cost of 15,000 kwacha from stock for his own consumption without paying for them. He charges a markup of 20% on all his sales. Note number two is private telephone. Derek uses a private telephone to make business calls. During the tax year 2020, he incurred the telephone, expense, uh, telephone expenses amounting to 10,800 kwacha. It has been agreed with the Commissioner General that Derek uses telephone 60% for business use. The telephone expenses have not been included in the above statement of profit or loss. Provisional income tax. Provisional income tax paid by Derek during the tax year 2020 amounted to 40,000 kwacha. Implements plant and machinery. Derek had the following assets qualifying for capital allowances on 1st January 2020. So as you can see, we have two columns there. There's a column for income tax value. There's also the column for the original cost. So we have old office equipment, motor car, fixers and fittings. Derek entered into the following capital transactions during the year uh, during the tax year 2020. So again on that one, the figures which are in brackets, they indicate or they symbolize the proceeds which were actually realized from disposal of non-current assets. So we have bought delivery van, sold office equipment, bought office furniture. It has been agreed with the Commissioner General that Derek has private use in the motor car of 40% required. A. Candidates were required to calculate the capital allowances claimable by Derek for the tax year 2020. B. Calculate Derek's adjusted business profit for the tax year 2020. This old office equipment was disposed of. Therefore, Derek will not be able to claim capital allowances on this asset because it was sold. So all we need to do is now to compute the balancing charge or balancing allowance. So we need to compare the income tax value brought forward and the disposal proceeds. If the proceeds are more than the, uh, the income tax value, then there's a balancing charge. But if the income tax value is more than the disposal proceeds, then there's a balancing allowance. So we can see that on the old office equipment, there was a balancing charge of 5,000 kwacha. Motor car. The motor car, the income tax value at the beginning was 26,000 kwacha, but the original cost is 65,000 kwacha. Therefore, in claiming capital allowances, we are going to claim on the original cost 
which we are going to restrict to business use. In the question they have said, Derek and the Commissioner General, they have agreed that 40%, 40% relate to private purposes. Therefore, when we compute capital allowances, we strictly get the percentage for which Derek used that, um, that car for business purposes, in this case, which is 60%. Fixtures and fittings. Fixtures and fittings, again, we have the income tax value brought forward, but again, like I have explained earlier, we claim capital allowances on the original cost at 25%. A delivered van. Delivered van, this is a new asset which was just acquired during the tax year. Therefore, we start from the cost. Then we claim capital allowances again at 25% because this is a commercial vehicle. Office furniture, this is the new asset. Again, we start from the cost of 20,000 kwacha. We claim again wear and tear at 25%. Then we have the new office equipment. The new office equipment costs 15,000 kwacha. So we claim wear and tear again at 25%. So if you add all the allowances and deduct the balancing charge, on the disposal of the old office equipment, the total amount of capital allowances claimable by Derek for the tax year 2020 comes to 41,550. We need to identify which expenses are disallowable and which expenses are allowable. Therefore, the starting point is the net profit as per account of 149,000 kwacha. And then we need to identify those expenses which are not allowable so that we add them back to the net profit. Okay. So we have the nephew's excess salary as per general rule when you employ your relative in the business. The most important thing is that that relative of yours has to get a salary equal to the salary payable to other employees performing the same functions. But this, is, this was not the case in uh, Derek's nephew because the Derek's nephew was drawing a salary of 50,000 kwacha whilst other employees performing the same functions we are getting a salary of 27,000 kwacha. Therefore, ZRA does not accept that. So we find the difference, then we disallow. Derek's salary, the salary for the owner of the business is not allowable, so we add it back. Rent and rates, we disallow 40% because 40% relates to private accommodation and not for the business. As a general rule, depreciation is disallowable, so you can see that we have disallowed there. Entertaining customers, we disallow. Uh, gifts to customers of food ampers, that one also we disallow. Then loans to former employees written off, we disallow. Legal fees for overspeeding offenses, that one also we disallow. Legal fees for purchase of land, land is a non-current asset, therefore any costs which are incurred in the purchase of a non-current asset are not allowed. So we have disallowed those legal costs. Then the income tax appeal, we have also disallowed that one. Fines for breach of labor laws, that one also we disallow. Then purchase of office equipment, this is a non-current asset. You only uh, claim wear and tear allowances, therefore we disallow. Then we also have a donation to a political party. So that one also we have disallowed. As you can see, penalty for late submission of returns, we have also disallowed that one. It is not allowable. Then goods taken for personal use. When you draw goods from your business without paying for them, that one is disallowable. The disallowable amount is the selling price of those goods. Therefore, as you can see there, the original cost of those goods which Derek took from the business was 15,000 kwacha. We have added a markup of 20% to arrive at the selling price of those goods, which gives us 18,000 kwacha. So, total disallowables, Total, uh, total disallowables amounting to 238,100 kwacha were actually added to the net profit. Let's look at the other section of our computation, which is the deduction part. We need to deduct the income included in the income statement or statement of profit or loss, which is not taxable. We need also to deduct expenses which were not included in the income statement, but they are allowable. So in our case, the deductions include profit on disposal of non-current assets. This one is not taxable, so we have deducted 12,000 kwacha there. Rental income. Rental income we have deducted 10% withholding tax. That's the final tax. Royalties. Royalties we have deducted because, yes, withholding tax is not the final tax, but royalties is not the core business. It's not the business income. That falls under other income. So we subtract. Bank interest, we subtract. 
Now, candidates need to understand that. Here, you subtract the investment income the way they've been included in the statement of profit or loss. Because again, some candidates, they make a mistake. The net amounts are included in the statement of profit or loss, someone is deducting a gross amount. No, if a net amount is included in the statement of profit or loss, please ensure that you deduct the net amount. Okay. Then we have decrease in general provision for recoverable debts. So that one again, there was a decrease from uh, 12,000 at the beginning to 10,000 at the end of the, the, the tax year. So there's a difference of 2,000 kwacha. So that one also we deduct. Then we have capital allowances. The capital allowances we computed in part A. Part A gave us a total capital allowances of 41,550. So that is the figure appearing there. We are going to deduct it. Then telephone expenses, remember that private telephone in the question, Derek was using that telephone, but the expenses, the bills were not included in the statement of profit or loss. The rule is that if you incur an expense, for as long as it is revenue in nature, for as long as it is incurred for the purpose of the business, then that expense is allowable. So we compute the allowable amount, okay? And the telephone was being used 60% for business. So we calculate 60% of 10,800, the total telephone bill, giving us 6,480. So these are the deductions. Now, if you add the total, starting from the 12,000 to 6,480, the total is 175,030 kwacha. We deduct this amount from 387,100 kwacha, giving us the adjusted business profit of 212. 1070 kwacha. So that is our part B. In part C, the question required candidates to compute the income tax payable by Derek. Now, on this part, you need to aggregate, you need to aggregate all the taxable income. So in this case, of course, Derek as taxable business profit of 212.70 kwacha. But that is not the only income that Derek received during the tax year. Derek also received royalties. Now, for royalties, withholding tax is at 15% at source. That 15% at source is not the final tax. Therefore, we add it to the adjusted D business profit. For bank interest, bank interest for individuals, it is exempt from tax. So we will not include it there. For rental income, rental income is subjected to withholding tax at a rate of 10%, and that is the final tax. So again, we will not include it there. So basically here we are simply saying that the taxable income for Derek includes tax-adjusted business profits as well as royalties. So if we add those to a total taxable income is coming to 282,070 kwacha. How do we compute tax for individuals? Tax for individuals, we use the income tax bands. Income tax bands. First, 39,600 kwacha is 0%. The next 9,600 kwacha, 25%. The next 25,200 kwacha, uh, 30%. And then anything above 74,400, it is taxed at 37.5%. Percent that is for individuals. Therefore, applying those income tax bands to Derek's um, uh, question, we, we can see that the first 74,400 kwacha, it will give us 9,960 kwacha. The balance of 207,670 kwacha, we tax it at the 7.5%, giving us 77,876 kwacha. So the total income tax liability comes to 87,836 kwacha. We deduct the tax that has already been paid under the provisional income tax system of 40,000 kwacha. We also subtract the withholding tax that has already been deducted from the royalties at source, 10,500 kwacha. So if we deduct these amounts, we are coming to 37,336 kwacha. This is the amount of income tax payable by Derek for the tax year 2020. Okay, let's move on to the next topic here. We are still looking at topic specific weaknesses. So just from looking at the uh, uh, taxation of unincorporated businesses, we can now move on to taxation of emoluments from employment. Now, the weaknesses 
on this topic, which are demonstrated by candidates in an exam, include the following. Failing to distinguish between taxable and exempt emoluments. Now, we need to understand that it is not every payment that the employer makes to an employee which is taxable. Some benefits are exempt. And as candidates, tax experts, we really need to understand this. Number two, failing to deal with other allowable deductions from employment, such as capital allowances and travel expenses. Employees also, they do incur certain expenses to perform their duties of employment. So these expenses, for as long as they were incurred in the performance of the duties of employment, are supposed to be deducted as allowable expenses. Number three, failing to deal with payments on cessation of employment. Now, when employment ceases, when employment is terminated, the employer makes certain payments to an employee. We need to understand the tax treatment of these payments. It is very, very important. Number four, failing to deal with the NAPSA contributions. We know that each and every employee is required by law to contribute to NAPSA. Number five, failure to apply double taxation reliefs on foreign income. You know, sometimes as individuals, you can actually make some investments in foreign countries. When we receive that income, how do we treat with that income? Of course, if it is taxed in that country, it comes to Zambia. Zambia also we tax. That is what we call double taxation. Now, there are some double taxation reliefs which are available. Candidates, in most cases, they demonstrate lack of knowledge on these double taxation reliefs. Hence, when a question requires them to apply this, they score poor marks. Lastly, the weakness on this topic is failure to determine the resident status of individuals. So sometimes, again, candidates, they fail to, to apply those factors as they are included in the Income Tax Act to determine the resident status of individuals. Who is a resident in Zambia for tax purposes and who is not a resident in Zambia for tax purposes? So in most cases, again, candidates, they fail. Johnny Mutashi had been employed by AOGA Limited, a company engaged in mining. His conditions of service had been as follows. Annual salary, 300,000 kwacha. Transport allowance, 15% of basic salary. School children's allowance, 4,500 kwacha per annum per child. General purpose allowance, 2,000 kwacha per month. He has four school-going children. On 31st August 2020, he retired from employment when he reached the retirement age. On his retirement, he was paid his accrued leave pay amounting to 17,000 kwacha, severance pay amounting to 40,000 kwacha, repatriation pay amounting to 22,000 kwacha, and the pension refund amounting to 530,000 kwacha. He had always been accommodated in a company owned house for which he paid no rent. The house was acquired at a cost of 600,000 kwacha and at a market value of 1,200,000 kwacha as at 1st January 2020. The company maintains the house and during the tax year 2020, the company paid utility expenses in connection with the house amounting to 1,600 kwacha per month and the securities fees amounting to 1,000 200 kwacha per month. On 1st May 2020, he received the Labor Day Award comprising of cash, 5,000 kwacha, and AOG television set valued at 13,400 kwacha. He also received a long-term service award amounting to 9,000 kwacha in cash. During the tax year 2020, he received the following investment income from Zambian companies. So we have dividends, of course, from mining companies which gross, uh, which were gross, 20,000 kwacha. Royalties, net, 55,250 kwacha. Bank interest, gross, 10,000 kwacha. John also received the following investment income from foreign investments. So rental income, net, 21,300 US dollars. Dividends, net, 4,500 US dollars. Royalties, net, 1,200 US dollars. Dollars. The rental income is net of foreign withholding tax at a total of 15%, while dividends and royalties are net of 
foreign withholding tax at a rate of 20% and 40% respectively. During the tax year 2020, he incurred the following expenses, school children's school fees, uh, professional subscription, donation to approved public benefit organization, donation to a political party, purchase of work uniforms, medical expenses, tax already paid under pay as UN system, NAPSA contributions. The average mid-rate exchange rate provided by the Bank of Zambia is 14.8 kwacha per US dollar, which the Commissioner General approved for the tax at 2020. Required, calculate the amount of income tax payable by John Mutash for the tax year 2020. Now, unilateral credit relief is available against Zambian income tax on all. Take your career prospects to the next level with Zika. Our diploma in accountancy is an essential qualification if you're planning on entering the accounting profession. The Zika tax program at both certificate and diploma level equips you with an enhanced understanding of the field of taxation. Our diploma in public sector financial management is ideal for accountants or trainee accountants working in the public sector. And CA Zambia, a respected designation designed to ensure that graduates are highly trained to hold senior positions in the workplace. You can study through flexible options like self-study as well as part-time or full-time through our accredited tuition providers. Zika sponsors the top CA Zambia graduate to the One Young World Summit for Young Leaders and also offers scholarships to the top university accountancy graduates from recognized universities. Visit zika.co.zm now for more information or find us on Facebook and LinkedIn. Don't delay. Your future awaits. 20,000 kwacha, that was an annual salary, so we restrict it to 8 out of 12, so that we get the salary exactly that was earned for a period of 8 months. Then transport allowance, we will, of course we restrict also to 8 months and then multiply by 15%, so as you can see we have a 200,000 kwacha salary there, 15% applied on the 200,000 kwacha, that gives us a 30,000 kwacha, then we have a school children's allowance, 4,500 kwacha per child, multiplied by four school-going children restricted to eight months. That gives us 12,000 kwacha. Then general purpose allowance also restricted to eight months. Then we have accrued leave pay, utility expenses in connection with the house, of course. Yeah, we do know that the house belongs to the company. Therefore, the expenses that are incurred by the company to maintain that house, those amounts are actually taxable on John. So we have added those amounts as well, security expenses, we have added utility expenses, and then we have also added a long-term service award of 9,000 kwacha, bringing the total taxable employment income to 306,400 kwacha. Okay, let's now add the Zambian investment income. Remember, bank interest, bank interest, it is exempt from tax for individuals because the rate is at 0% and that is the final tax. So we only add royalties here, which is 55,200 kwacha. We are told it is net, so we need to gross it up. We multiply by 100 out of 85 to give us the gross figure of 65,000 kwacha. We can now deduct the allowable deductions. The allowable deductions incurred by John. So we have professional subscription, that one we allow. Donation to an approved public benefit organization, we also allow. Purchase of uniforms, we also allow. So total allowables coming to 29,200 kwacha. Okay. Let's now look at the foreign income. For the foreign income, John received rental income. John received dividends. John also received the royalties. Now, of these three, you should understand that according to the Income Tax Act, any income that is earned from letting of property that is situated outside the Republic of Zambia, it is exempt from Zambian tax. So this simply means that the rental income that was earned from foreign investments, that income will not be taxable. It is exempt. Okay. The other thing that we need to understand also is that according to our rules, we tax gross amounts. We do not tax net amounts. So therefore, the foreign income, we have to gross it before we can include it in the Zambian tax computation. So as you can see there, we have $4,500 for dividends. 
We gross it up first, then we can now translate it from dollars into Zambian kwacha, multiplying by the rate which the Commission General approved of 14 kwacha 18 ngwe. So giving us a total of 83,250 kwacha. Same applies to foreign royalties. So royalties were 1,200 US dollars. Again, we gross them up and then convert them into Zambian kwacha, giving us 29,000. 600. So if we add those amounts, the total taxable for uh, the total foreign taxable income coming to 112,850 kwacha. If we add now the Zambian uh, income and the foreign income, we are getting the total taxable income of 455,050 kwacha. Just 74,400 kwacha. The amount of tax on that one is 9,960 kwacha. 9,960 kwacha. The balance of 380,650 will be taxed at a maximum rate of 37.5%, giving us 142,744. So the income tax liability coming to 152,704 kwacha. What are the deductions? We need to subtract the tax that has already been paid. So we have pay as you earn 89,721. So we need to subtract that. Withholding tax on royalties, Zambian royalties, of course, 15% on the 65,000 kwacha gross amount, giving us 9,750 kwacha. Double taxation relief. Now, in the question, we are told that the unilateral credit relief applies. The unilateral credit relief, it simply means that Zambia has got no agreement, has got no double taxation convention with the country in question. So in this case, we can say uh, the country in which uh, John made those investments, there is no agreement between that country and Zambia. Therefore, the government of the Republic of Zambia, through ZRI, of course, they are going to give you a double taxation relief unilaterally. How do we give this relief? We compare the foreign tax that we paid in a foreign country with the equivalent Zambian tax on that income. Whichever is lower, that is what we are going to give you as a relief. So this is how unilateral credit relief works. So like in our question here, if you look at the, the dividends, you look at the dividends, the foreign tax that was paid in that foreign country, we get a gross amount of 3,250 kwacha, we tax it at 20%, the rate of withholding tax giving us 16,650 kwacha. This was the foreign tax paid. Let's try to calculate the equivalent, the equivalent Zambian tax on the dividends. If we calculate the equivalent Zambian tax on the dividends, we are saying we get gross foreign income divided by total accessible income multiplied by Zambian tax charge. So in this case, we are getting the 83,250 gross foreign dividends divided by the total taxable income or total assessable income of 455,050 kwacha multiplied by the total income tax liability. It gives us the equivalent tax of 27,937 kwacha. So if we compare these two, you find that the lower, uh, the lower is the foreign tax of 16,650 kwacha. So this is the relief that will be given to John on the dividends. Same applies to royalties. So royalties, again, we do the same thing. The foreign tax on royalties, we get 29,600 kwacha multiplied by 40%. This gives us 11,840 kwacha. Uh, the equivalent Zambian tax, again, we get the gross foreign income, which is the royalties divided by the total accessible income, multiplied by the total income tax liability. So we have a 29,600 divided by 455,050 kwacha, multiplied by 152,704 kwacha. It is giving us 9,933. If you compare these two amounts, you find that actually the Zambian tax is on the lower side. So we pick the lower, which is 9,933. It's what we give as a double taxation relief. So, uh, going back to our computation, you will see that we have deducted pay as UN, we have deducted withholding tax on royalties, we have deducted the double taxation relief, dividends 16,650, royalties 9,933. 
total deductions coming to 126,054 kwacha, leaving us with the income tax payable by John for the tax year 2020 of 26,650 kwacha. So this is how we tax. This is how we compute tax on employment income. Um, let's move on to the next topic. We are still looking at topic specific weaknesses. This time around, we are now looking at taxation of estates and trusts. I know some candidates may not understand what an estate is. An estate is simply the collection of properties, assets, and investments that are left behind by the deceased. So, meaning that when someone, when a person, when an individual dies, all the properties, all the belongings, all the investments that are left behind by that person, they are the ones which constitute an estate. Now, what are some of the failures here which are demonstrated by the candidates in an exam? So, we have two main failures on this topic. Number one, failure to compute tax payable by the deceased and tax payable on the estate. So, in most cases, candidates fail to distinguish between the deceased individual and the estate. Now, according to the rules, any income that is attributable, any income that was earned by the individual, the deceased, before the date of death, that income is taxed on that deceased individual. Of course, that person is not there. Therefore, the tax is paid by the administrators or the executors. That is, if that individual left a will. The other failure is that most candidates fail to compute taxes payable by trusts. So, uh, these are the main, main failures on this topic. Let's also try to look at uh, uh, an illustration on this topic. Okay, so the illustration is as follows. You are employed as a tax senior in a firm of chartered accountants. You have been presented with the following information relating to Andrew Himonga, one of your clients. Andrew Himonga had been employed by Zambian resident company for many years. His annual basic salary for the year 2020 was 270,000 kwacha. He was entitled to an annual housing allowance of 20% of his annual basic salary and an annual transport allowance of 10% of his annual basic salary. He was paid on a monthly basis. In the tax year 2020, his employer additionally made monthly medical scheme contributions of 600 kwacha per month on his behalf. On 31st July 2020, Andrew Imonga died after a short illness. On his death, the company paid the executor his repatriation pay of 40,000 kwacha, severance pay of 46,000 kwacha, accrued leave pay amounting to 22,000 kwacha, and exgratia payments amounting to 25,000 kwacha. Now, we need to understand that exgratia payments are voluntary payments that are made by the employer to the family members of the deceased. Usually these expenses, they simply, or these payments, they simply help to administer and run the funeral. Okay? Now, on the same date, the executor was additionally given a refund of his employer's NAPSA contributions amounting to 200,000 kwacha, as well as a refund of his employer's NAPSA contributions, which also amounted to 200,000 kwacha. Andrew Imonga had always contributed 5% of his basic salary as NAPSA contributions throughout his period of employment. During the tax year 2020, pay as you earn amounting to 50,403 kwacha was deducted from his employment income. Andrew Imonga made a donation to an approved public benefit organization in April 2020 amounting to 12,700 kwacha and paid professional subscription amounting to 4,600 Kwacha in February 2020. His will left his assets split in equal shares among his, uh, between his children, uh, Mwene and Mwemba. The assets comprised in Andrew Imonga's estate were as follows. So number one, 3,000 uh, hectares of farmland, which he had acquired at a cost of 600,000 kwacha on 1st January 2008, and at a market value of 1,450,000 Kwacha on the 1st July 2020. Residential plots 
ya kwaja at a cost of 350,000 kwacha on 1st November 2006 with a market value of 970,000 kwacha on the date of death. Shopping complex he built in October 2016 at a cost of 560,000 kwacha. The market value of the complex as at the 1st July 2020 was determined to be 830,000 kwacha. Then there's a family house which acquired at a cost of 200,000 kwacha on 1st June 2001 under the market value of 1,020,000 kwacha. Various cartels which he had purchased at a total cost of 300,000 kwacha and at the total market value of 310,000 kwacha on 31st July 2020 which is the date of death. Cash in his current accounts of 153,000 kwacha, then 50,000 shares he held in Delight PLC, a company listed on the Securities Exchange. He acquired the shares on 1st March 2011 at a cost of 3 kwacha 15 ngwe each. On 31st July 2020, which is the date of death, the shares at the market value of 15.50 kwacha per share. The appointed executor in the will, uh, in the will uh, left behind by Andrew Imonga, is confused and is not sure about how to deal with the various tax issues relating to Andrew's, uh, Andrew's affairs in the tax year 2020 and has approached your firm for advice. Mwemba intends to put all his, inert, uh, all his inheritance from his father's estate in a trust for the benefit of his children. He is not sure of the types of trusts which are available. His eldest daughter is 15 years old and she's currently in grade 11. Required. You are required A, to calculate the total amount of income tax payable by Andrew Imonga for the tax year 2020. B, calculate both the tax payable on the estate left by Andrew Imonga and the inheritance due to each of his two children, Mwene and Mwemba. Explain the meaning of each of the following types of trusts. That is part C. One, interest in possession trusts. Two, discretionary trust. Three, accumulation and maintenance trust. So the annual salary was 270, we restrict it to seven months out of 12, giving us 157,500 kwacha. Housing allowance, again, we restrict it to only seven months, giving us the 1,500 kwacha. Transport allowance, again, we restrict it to seven months at 10%, giving us 15,750 kwacha. Medical scheme contributions. You see, when the employer, when the employer discharges the liability of an employee by paying his or her rent, school fees, membership association fees, or any similar payments, such payments are supposed to be added to the payments or the emoluments of an employer and deduct tax under the Fair UN system. So this is what is applying even here. So the medical scheme contributions which the employer paid on behalf of Andrew is supposed to be added to his emoluments and then compute tax under the Fair UN system. Okay. We also add accrued leave pay or other payments which were made to Andrew after the date of death. Those payments are treated as terminal benefits. Therefore, there will be no income tax charged on those payments. So the total taxable income coming to 230,950 kwacha before deducting the allowable deductions. Allowable deductions will only have two. Number one is donations to a, an approved public benefit organization amounting to 12,700 kwacha. Number two, professional subscription, 4,600 kwacha, bringing the total allowable deductions to 17,000 300 kwacha. So if we subtract that from the total taxable income there, we have the amount of uh, 213,650, which we are going to subject to taxation. Let's not forget, Andrew Imonga is an individual. So again, the same income tax bans apply. Okay. So first 74,400 kwacha, 9,960 kwacha. Then we have uh, the balance of 139,250 kwacha. Tax at 7.5%, giving us 52,219 kwacha. The total income tax liability coming to 62,179 kwacha. So if we deduct the pay as UN of 50,403 kwacha, we are getting the income tax payable by Andrew Imonga of 11,770 
six quarters, which include farmland. The market value was 1,450,000 kwacha. Residential plots, the market value 970,000 kwacha. Shopping complex, the market value 830,000 kwacha. The family house, 1,020,000 kwacha. Cash, 153,000 kwacha. Various cartels, 310,000 kwacha. Then we have now shares in Delight PLC, 50,000 multiplied by the market price per share of 15 kwacha, 15 ngwe. It's giving us 775,000 kwacha. So if we get a total of all these properties, we are getting 5,508,000 kwacha. I said that an estate is a person according to the Income Tax Act. Therefore, persons other than an individual are liable to pay income tax at a rate of 35%. So even an estate will pay income tax at a rate of 35%, just like a limited company. So we need to get now 35% of 5,508,000 kwacha, giving us the total tax of 1,927,800 kwacha. So if we deduct that amount from the total market value, it leaves us with the inheritance due to the beneficiaries, which is Mwene and Mwemba. So the inheritance due is 3,508,200 kwacha. We are told in the question that the will that Andrew Imonga left stated that the estate will be shared equally between his two children. So meaning that Mwene will get 50%, Mwemba also will get 50%. So that is part B of the question. In part C, we are talking about types of trusts here. So we have an interest in possession trust. We have a discretionary trust. So we know these definitions, they are as they are indicated in the study manual and uh, other uh, revision kits. So therefore, kindly go through the Zika manual D4 uh, for the year 2020. You actually be able to access. This is a very, very important topic for tax experts. We need to be able to advise our clients correctly so that we advise them on the correct amounts of taxes payable. We also advise them on the correct way of minimizing the tax liabilities. So under this topic, the following are the failures that are demonstrated by the candidates in an exam. Number one, failure to reach a conclusion based on the information provided in the question on the best option to use to run the business. So meaning that an individual, as individuals, they have got three options. They can run the business as a sole trader, as a partnership, or as a limited company. So three individuals or two individuals, they can come together, incorporate a business, and run it as a limited company. But as tax experts, as we advise, we need to look at the tax implications of each type or, or each form of business. Number two, failure to advise on the taxation implications, drawing, uh, the taxation implications of drawing profits from the company by individuals either as emoluments or as dividends. Failure to advise taxpayers on the best method to use to extract profits from the company. Failure to apply taxation principles to compute tax payable if the business is run as a sole trader, partnership, or as a limited company. Failure to advise taxpayers of the taxation implications of being employed or self-employed. Failure to explain the taxation implications of financial protection products and other investment schemes. Okay, so on this one as well, we are going to look at an illustration so that we actually look at how we can improve on those mistakes which we make in an exam. The illustration is as follows. So we have two parts of this. Uh, this question is in two parts. The first one we are looking at Charwe and Chaswe. So the question is saying, for the purpose of this question, you should assume that today's date is 20th December 2019, and the ceiling for the purposes of NAPSA contribution should be taken to be 275,904 kwacha per annum. Okay. Charwe and Charles were intend to commence in business on 1st January 2020, running a chain of stores. They will run the business as a limited company, under the name of C&C &C Limited, Charwe and Chaswe will each own 50% of the share capital of the company. On 1st January 2020, the company will buy two motor cars, each with a cylinder capacity of 2,900 cc at a cost of 210,000 kwacha each. 
Charwe and Chaswe each expect to have private use in each motor car of 35%. They will additionally purchase shop buildings at a cost of 300,000 kwacha and fix, uh, fixers and fittings at a cost of 75,000 kwacha. The tax adjusted business profit before capital allowances and end with draw of profits by Charwan Chaswe for the ended the 1st December 2020 is estimated to be 1,420,000 kwacha. Charwe and Chaswe wish to draw 350,000 kwacha of the profits each, either as emoluments paid to themselves by the company or as gross dividends. Any NAPSA contributions payable will be computed as 5% of their relevant income. The other part of the question is looking at Robert. Okay, so on this one again they are saying, for the purpose of this part of the question, assume that today's date is 12th December 2019, and that the earning ceiling for NAPSA contribution purposes is 275,900 for kwacha per annum. Robert wishes to commence in business on 1st January 2020 running an auto spares business. He will prepare accounts to 31st December each year, he expects the annual turnover from the business to exceed 800,000 kwacha. Robert would like to involve his son, Albert, in running this business, but he's not sure whether from a taxation point of view it will be beneficial to involve Albert in the business by taking him on as an employee or run the business as a, uh, and run the business as a sole trader or as a partner and run the business as a, a partnership. Regardless of how the business is run, a delivery van will be acquired on 1st January 2020 at a cost of 160,000 kwacha to be used only and exclusively for business purposes. Robert owns his own personal motor car, which he acquired a year ago, uh, a year ago at a cost of 60,000 kwacha, which he will use partly for business purposes. The business use of the motor car is estimated to be 30%. If Robert involves Albert in the business as an employee, the taxable business profit for the year ending 31st December 2020 is expected to be 970,400 kwacha. This profit figure is after all tax adjustments but before deducting capital allowances and expenses relating to the two individuals. The expenses relating to the two individuals will include annual salaries of 320,000 kwacha for Robert and 280,000 kwacha for Albert. Robert will also pay annual medical insurance premiums amounting to 40,000 kwacha and annual lunch allowance of 10,000 kwacha. Employees in other businesses performing similar duties as Albert get the same emoluments as Albert will be getting. Robert will be required to pay uh, employers and APSA contributions of 5% of Albert's salary. Uh, Albert will also be required to pay 5% of his salary to NAPSA as employees' contributions. If Robert involves Albert in the business as a partner, the taxable business profit for the ending 31st December 2020 is expected to be 970,000 kwacha, 970, kwacha. This profit figure is after all tax adjustments but before deducting capital allowances and payment of expenses relating to the two individuals. The expenses relating to the two individuals will include annual partnership salaries of 320,000 kwacha and 280,000 kwacha for Robert and Albert respectively. Under this option, annual medical insurance premiums amounting to 40,000 kwacha and annual lunch allowance of 10,000 kwacha will be paid out of business profits on behalf of who? Albert. Any balance of profits or losses will be shared between Robert and Albert in the ratio of 2 to 1, respectively. Required. A. Calculate the income tax and NAPSA contributions payable by Charwe and Chaswe for the tax year 2020 if they draw 350,000 kwacha of the profits each as gross directors' emoluments. Two, they draw 350,000 kwacha of the profits each as gross dividends. B. Calculate the company income tax and NAPSA contributions payable by the company for the tax year 2020 if they draw 350,000 kwacha of the profits each as gross directors' emoluments, and two, if they draw 350,000 kwacha each as gross dividends. C. Advise Charwe and Chaswe on whether to draw the profits as directors' emoluments or as gross dividends. Your advice should be supported by computations of net income after deducting 
the tax payable and any NAPSA contributions under each option. In relation to Robert and Albert, calculate the income tax payable by Robert and Albert for the tax year 2020 on the basis that Albert is brought into the business as an employee. Two, calculate the income tax payable by Robert and Albert for the tax year 2020 on the basis that Albert is brought into the business as a partner. Lastly, calculate Robert, so advise Robert as to which of the two options is beneficial from a tax point of view, uh, from a tax point of view. Your advice should be supported by a computation of income, net of income tax and NAPSA contributions. Okay. Now, this is in part A, the question wanted us to calculate the income tax payable by Charwe and Chasu on the basis that they draw 350,000 kwacha as emoluments. Now, in this case, Charwe and Chaswe will be directors of C and C Limited. Therefore, whatever amounts that they are going to draw in the capacity as directors, it will be treated as emoluments from employment. Therefore, the taxation principles we apply are taxation of employment income. So as you can see in the computation there, the emoluments that were, uh, will be drawn by Charwan Chasu will be 350,000 kwacha each, so that will be the taxable emoluments. And then Charwan Chasu, they are individuals, so we use the income tax bonds to tax them. So if you see we apply those income tax bonds, you are able to see that the income tax payable for Charwe is 113,310 kwacha, Chaswe also 113,310 kwacha. But if they draw dividends, dividends they are only taxed at 15% at source and that is the final tax. So if Charwe and Chaswe draw 350,000 kwacha each as dividends, the only tax they are going to pay is 15% of that amount. So 15% of 350,000 kwacha, it gives us 52,500 kwacha. So those are the only taxes that Charwe and Chaswe will pay under this alternative. Let's move on to part B. Part B, it is the company now. How much tax will the company pay if Charwe and Chaswe draw 350,000 kwacha each as emoluments? Okay, this is a company. Our starting point will be the business profits. The business profits of 1,420,000 kwacha as indicated in the question. Then we are going to deduct. Since this profit, we are told it is before any deductions of the expenses relating to the two individuals. So we subtract directors emoluments. 350,000 kwacha by two directors because Charwan Chaswe will each draw 350,000 kwacha. This gives us 700,000 kwacha. Employers and a contribution. Remember there's a seeding. Charwan Chaswe will be getting the emoluments of 350,000 kwacha. But for NAPSA purposes, a seeding is 275,900 for kwacha. So by two employees multiplied by 5%, it is giving us the total employers' contributions of 27,590 kwacha. Capital allowances. On the motor cars, the motor cars, the wear and tear um, uh, rate is 20%. So we get the cost, 210,000 kwacha by two motor cars, by 20% wear and tear, giving us 84,000 kwacha, capital allowances. Capital allowances on shop, uh, shop buildings. Remember, shop buildings, these are commercial buildings. So the wear and tear rate is 2%. So we get 2% of 300,000 kwacha, giving us 6,000 kwacha. Fixtures and fittings, 75,000 kwacha, 25% giving us 18,750 kwacha. So total deductions coming to 836,340 uh, kwacha. Remember, this is a company. So for a company, we do not use income tax bans, but we use a flat income tax rate of 35%. So the taxable business property is 583,660 kwacha. Multiplied by 35%, it is giving us 204,281 kwacha. So this is the tax that C and C company will be able to pay if Charwe and Chaswe draw uh, directors emoluments of five, uh, 315,000 kwacha each. What about if they draw dividends? Remember, dividends are an appropriation of profits. Therefore, under this alternative, dividends will not be allowed for tax purposes because that is an appropriation of profit. Again, there will be no NAPSA contributions because NAPSA is not contributed on investment income. It is contributed 
on the income earned by individuals from employment. So NAPSA contributions are not there, then dividends are not allowable. So the only allowable deductions we are going to make with are capital allowances on the assets that the company will buy. So those assets again, they include motor cars, uh, same rate 20%, then shop buildings at 2%, fixers and fittings at 25%, giving us the total deduction of 108,750 kwacha. So the taxable business profit in this case is 1,311,250 kwacha, tax at 35%, giving us the income tax payable of 458,938 kwacha. Now, part C. It is to advise now, Charwe and Chaswe, which one will be more beneficial? From the tax point of view, the question has already clarified. We should use the net income as the basis for our advice. Therefore, let's look at the two alternatives. Withdraw 350,000 kwacha as dividends or withdraw 350,000 kwacha as emoluments. So we, we look at those two alternatives. So the starting point will be the net profit of 1 million 420,000 kwacha. We are going to deduct income tax expenses payable by Charwe, payable by Chaswe, also payable by C and C Limited as a company. So you can see those deductions uh, being uh, made from the total net profit. We also deduct the employees' NAPSA contributions as well as the employers' NAPSA contributions. Okay, where appropriate. So in this case, you can see that if Charwe and Chaswe decides to draw 350,000 kwacha as directors in monuments, the net income will be 933,919 kwacha. If they decide to draw dividends, the net income will be 856,062 kwacha. Therefore, we advise the two individuals to go for the alternative that to maximize the net income after tax and other expenses. So in this case, Charwe and Chaswe should draw directors in monuments of who? 350,000 kwacha. So that is the advice. Okay, coming to the last part of this illustration, Robert and Albert, there are only two alternatives. Yes, either Albert is engaged as an employee or Albert is engaged as a partner. So if you look at um, uh, the question, if Albert is engaged as an employee, then Robert will earn a sole trader type of business. So again here, we start from the business profits, then we can now subtract allowable deductions, of which in this case, Albert's salary will be an allowable deduction. The medical insurance premium that will be paid on behalf of Albert, it will be an allowable deduction. The lunch allowance that will be paid to Albert, it will also be an allowable deduction. Employer's NAPSA. So we are going to deduct the employer's NAPSA, of course restricted to 275,904 kwacha, because Albert's salary is more than, two, uh, it is actually 280,000 kwacha. So we restrict that to 275,904 kwacha. Then we subtract also capital allowances on the delivery van and on the motor car. So the total allowables coming to 387,000 kwacha, 300, so 387,395 kwacha. Total taxable income, 583,005 kwacha. In this case, Robert is an individual. So again, we use the same income tax bands to compute the tax. So if we apply those income tax bands, you see that the total income tax rabbit is coming to 200,687. Okay, for Albert, he will be taxed only on the employment income because in this case, he will be an employee. So we get the employment income, which includes the salary, medical insurance premium, lunch allowance, and then we add those and subject them to tax using the income tax bands. Please. Take note that NAPSA contributions is not uh, NAPSA contributions are not allowable when computing the income tax payable by employees. Therefore, we have not included the NAPSA contribution there. Okay. What if Albert is engaged as a partner? If Albert is engaged as a partner, then we start by adjusting the business profit. Once we adjust the business profit, as you can see, only capital allowances on the motor van which is 25%, so 25% 25 of 164,000. From 970,400 kwacha, it is giving us 930,400 kwacha. For partners, we need to allocate the profits. Again, the question has guided us on how profits should be shared between Albert and Robert. So we follow that same agreement. So as you can see, we have allocated those business profits starting with the salaries, followed by medical insurance premium, 
followed by lunch allowance. Then the balance is shared between Robert and Albert in the ratio of two to one. So uh, the total uh, allocated profits, we have Robert getting 500, uh, 506,000 kwacha, 933 kwacha. Then Robert getting 423,467 kwacha. We now deduct capital allowances on the asset that each partner has brought into the business. We are told that Robert brought his own personal car. So we claim capital allowances on that one, giving us 3,600 uh, 3, kwacha. So we deduct that amount. Okay. Arriving at the taxable profits. Okay. So therefore, the computations again using the income tax bands, they are telling us that the income tax payable by Robert is 170,810 kwacha, 140,860 kwacha. Okay. The advice. Just like the previous one, we need to look at the net income that uh, um, uh, Albert and uh, Robert will get if Albert is engaged as an employee as well as if Albert is engaged as uh, a partner. So again, when we subtract those deductions, you can see that the net income and uh, uh, when, he, when Albert is engaged as an employee, it is 636,313. But if he's engaged as a partner, 658,730 kwacha. So we advise them to go for the uh, we, we advise them to engage Albert as a partner because under that alternative, they will be able to maximize the net income. Is effective use of reading time. The question paper, the flat page of the question paper, it states that candidates are given 15 minutes reading time. In most cases, candidates, they do not take advantage of that 15 minutes reading time. Therefore, we are saying that Read and understand the content, the context, and requirements of all questions. It's very, very important. Identify whether the taxpayer is an employee, a sole trader, uh, or maybe they are partners in a partnership or it's a limited company. As this, we will determine the tax rates applicable and whether capital allowances should be restricted to business use or not. This is very, very important. Pay attention to debts, as this may affect the computation of taxable income and penalties and interest on debt payment of tax. Pay attention to instructions and understand the active verbs used in a question which dictates the approach answers should take. For example, discuss, explain, and calculate. Start with the questions you feel is the easiest. Do things you find to be easy which guarantees you some marks. Decide the order in which you are going to attempt the questions. Now, D4 has four composite questions. Therefore, do not spend more than 45 minutes on each question. A major cause of poor performance is the failure to complete the exam due to poor management of time. Number two, interpreting the question requirements. Misinterpreting the question requirements is another cause of poor performance. The following steps are important. Read the requirements first. Read the scenario so that you understand what is included in that scenario. Number three, read the question requirements again to make sure that you understand what the question uh, requires. Always highlight the word and as this means that there is more than one requirement and these extra requirements are missed in most cases. For example, calculate and advise. In most cases, candidates will concentrate on the calculation part and forget about the advice. Okay. Presentation of answers. Your handwriting must be readable. Don't think if you, you can read your handwriting, then everyone else will be able to read your handwriting. No. Make sure that you write what is, uh, what is readable. Your answer should be well structured. That is, the format and length of the answer to each part. Use standard workings for computational parts, e.g. capital allowances, adjusted business profits, and income tax liabilities. A standard working helps the market to locate the marks easily, and it helps you work your way through the figures in the question in a time-efficient way. For discussion questions, make use of uh, headings, bullets, sentences, and paragraphs to present your answer in a clear and concise manner. For questions with, uh, which require an answer to be in a particular format, e.g. a report, a memo, and a letter, make sure you present your answer in the requested format. Do not spend too long on any single calculation. Keep moving. Okay. We have now come to the end of our presentation. 
For any queries, any clarifications, contact the Zambia Institute of Chartered Accountants. Thank you.